Hi, and welcome to another expanded information video here on RotaxOwner.com. In this video, we will look at Service Bulletin SB912063, which covers the replacement of Bing fuel pumps on Rotax 912 series aircraft engines. In isolated cases, the fuel pressure provided by these mechanical fuel pumps was outside the rated pressure limits. As a precaution, Rotax is recommending the replacement of fuel pumps within certain serial number ranges. First, let's clarify which fuel pumps are affected. Only Bing fuel pumps with a part number of 892542 or 892546 and which are within a certain specific serial number range are affected by this service bulletin. Newer style Corona fuel pumps are not affected. Older style Pierberg fuel pumps are also not affected. Check the service bulletin in section 1.1 for a list of the specific serial number ranges that are affected and are recommended to be replaced. The Bing fuel pumps needing replacement come in two varieties, either as a pump with barbed fittings or as a pump assembly with rubber fuel lines and fire sleeve pre-installed. The bare pump with no pre-installed fuel lines has a part number of 892542. The pump assembly with pre-installed fuel lines has a part number of 892546. The replacement of the bare pump is straightforward. Remove the fuel lines from the fuel pump and remove and discard the fuel pump, gasket and lock washers. Install the new fuel pump with new base o-ring, gasket and lock washers. Torque the 13 mm nuts to 133 inch pounds or 15 newton meters. Many aircraft OEMs, especially LSA or equivalent type aircraft, use the fuel pump assembly with pre-installed fuel lines. The replacement of the fuel pump assembly with pre-installed fuel lines and fire sleeve requires careful consideration, as a replacement fuel pump will be provided with barbed fittings only. Careful removal and recrimping of these fuel lines and fire sleeve is required. We will show you here how to properly remove and recrimp the original fuel lines while retaining adequate fuel line length. If you are replacing a fuel pump with a part number of 892546, which has the pre-installed fuel lines, your replacement fuel pump will be provided with barbed fittings and new Oetker style crimp clamps. The first step is to carefully remove the fire sleeve band clamps from both fuel lines. The larger of the two fuel lines is the fuel supply inlet to the pump. The smaller line is the pressurized output to the carburetors. We will start with the larger fuel inlet line. For this job, you will need a set of heavy duty cutting pliers. Carefully cut through the clamp. The clamp is stainless steel and has two layers of strap material, so it can be a bit of work to cut through both. Take care not to damage the fire sleeve underneath, as we will be reusing this on the new fuel pump. Remove the clamp and pull back the fire sleeve to expose the fuel line and crimp underneath. Pull the fire sleeve up and clamp it in place with hose clamp pliers. This will keep the fire sleeve out of the way and keep fuel from leaking from the line. Using a very sharp blade, such as a fresh razor blade or an X-Acto knife, cut around the fuel line right at the end of the crimp. You can use the old metal crimp as a guide for your blade to keep the cut nice and straight. At this point in the fuel line, the barb on the fitting of the fuel pump will be directly underneath, allowing a solid surface to cut against, giving you a nice clean cut. After cutting, the old crimp clamp and approximately 20 millimeters of fuel line will be left on the fuel pump. Don't worry, the position of the barb fittings on the new replacement pump are slightly further inboard, so this compensates for the loss of fuel line length. 
you should have a nice clean cut at the end of the fuel line. If there are any bits of the fuel line or burrs of rubber left, carefully remove them so you do not contaminate the new fuel pump. Repeat this process to remove the fire sleeve clamp and cut the fuel line at the smaller pressure fuel line. Make sure you have a nice clean cut and carefully remove any contamination. The old fuel pump can now be removed. The fuel pump is mounted to the studs on the gearbox with 13 mm nuts. Remove and discard the fuel pump, fuel pump gasket, and lock washers. Although not entirely necessary, it's a good idea to lubricate the plunger of the fuel pump before installing. Use engine assembly lithium grease, anti-seize, or in a pinch just engine oil. This gives some pre-lubrication on the metal-to-metal -metal contact area for first startup. Install the new fuel pump with O-ring and new base gasket onto the studs. With new lock washers, Torque the nuts to 133 inch pounds or 15 newton meters. The new style replacement pump, often referred to as a corona pump, also has a large diameter fitting for the inlet or suction side of the pump and a smaller diameter fitting for the pressure side. Both fittings are clearly marked with arrows. We will start with installing the pressure side fuel line. Before fitting the fuel line onto the nipple fitting, mark the length of the fitting on the fuel line. Place the end of the fuel line onto the base of the nipple fitting at the pump and mark where the bar begins. This gives us a good visual indicator for the placement of the clamp. For installation and clamping of the fuel lines and fire sleeves onto the new fuel pump, you'll need four different sizes of Oetker style clamps. These clamps will be supplied in the replacement fuel pump kit. The specific style of Oetker one-ear clamp supplied with your fuel pump may differ slightly from the ones we show here. Since we are working on the smaller diameter pressure side line, slip the 12 to 15 millimeter clamp onto the hose first, followed by the 10 to 13 millimeter clamp. We need to have the two clamps in place right now so that we have one extra to crimp the fire sleeve in place. Before placing the fuel pressure hose onto the fuel pump, release the hose clamp pliers to allow some fuel to run out of the hose. This will aid in flushing out any debris inside the fuel line. Push the pressure fuel line onto the lower nipple fitting until it butts up flush with the base of the nipple fitting at the pump. Slide the first smaller clamp over the fitting just behind the mark that we just made on the hose. To crimp these Oetker style crimp clamps, you'll need an appropriate Oetker or Surlock style crimping tool. These tools are readily available from many suppliers, including North American locations such as Home Depot and even Staples. Using the crimping tool, Crimp the clamp securely in place. Crimping the clamp right behind our mark places the clamp at the optimal location for proper sealing on the nipple fitting. This also leaves us enough room to clamp the fire sleeve in place. Moving on to the larger fuel feed line. Repeat the process of measuring and marking for the clamp position. Slip the 22 to 25 mm clamp over the fuel line, followed by the 17 to 21 mm clamp. Before placing the fuel inlet hose onto the fuel pump, again release the hose clamp pliers to allow some fuel to run out of the hose. This aids in flushing out any debris inside the fuel line. Push the fuel feed line onto the upper larger nipple fitting until it butts up flush with the base of the nipple fitting itself. Slide the first smaller clamp over the fitting and crimp it in place just behind the mark on the hose. The installation is essentially complete at this point, except for the fire sleeve. But before we clamp the fire sleeve in place, we need to check for possible fuel leaks at these crimps before we cover them up. 
We also need to verify that the newly replaced fuel pump is producing appropriate pressure within the operating limits as supplied by Rotax. This leak and pressure test must be performed for both styles of fuel pumps, whether standard Rotax provided fuel lines and fire sleeve as we have here, or standard barb fitting fuel lines. If your aircraft does not have a permanently mounted fuel pressure gauge, a temporary gauge must be installed to verify the pressures. If your aircraft has the Rotax provided fuel lines as we have here, it's likely that the pressure fuel line will be connected to a Rotax provided distribution block. This fuel distribution block splits the fuel delivery to the two carburetors, as well as optionally a restricted fuel return line to the fuel tank. On this distribution block, there's a position provided to install a pressure gauge or a low pressure warning transducer. This is where we want to connect our fuel pressure gauge between the pressure outlet of the pump and the fuel inlets of the carburetors. A fuel pressure testing kit is available from Rotax with appropriate fittings. The part number for this kit is 874231 or 874233. Check with your nearest Rotax service center, repair center, or qualified Rotax IRMT technician for assistance in locating an appropriate gauge and connections. The minimum and maximum fuel pressure values can be found in the 912 series operator's manual. We need to see fuel pressure values between 2.2 psi minimum and 7.3 psi maximum, or 0.15 to 0.5 bar. These are fairly small values, so using a pressure gauge rated for up to 100 psi, for example, will be very difficult to read. Now that you have an appropriate pressure gauge attached, make sure that everything is secure in place and is safe for an engine test run. Start and briefly run the engine, then shut down and thoroughly check for any leakage at our fuel line crimps on the fuel pump. With a leak-free installation confirmed, start and run the engine at various RPMs, verifying that the fuel pressure remains within limits at all RPM ranges. Note that pressure readings will fluctuate at different RPM ranges. Likely the pressure will drop when coming down from high RPMs, and then raise back up when idle RPM is reached. This is perfectly normal. Now that we've verified that there are no leaks and the new fuel pump is providing appropriate fuel pressures, we can finish up by crimping the fire sleeves in place. Slip the fire sleeve in place over the fuel line and clamp and butt the fire sleeve up to the fuel pump housing. Pull the second clamp over the fire sleeve and set it in place so that all of the rubber fuel line will be clamped and protected by the fire sleeve. We don't want to have any exposed rubber line. Having already crimped the fuel hose clamps in place at the end of the nipple fittings, this has allowed us room to place the fire sleeve clamps at the end of the hose. Crimp the clamp to make sure that the fire sleeve stays in place. Repeat the fire sleeve installation for the second fuel line. If you had to install a temporary fuel pressure gauge, remove it now and replace any crush gaskets with new. Now, whether you have Rotax supplied fuel lines and fire sleeves crimped on or not, you may be wondering why this new Corona fuel pump has an extra nipple fitting at the bottom. This acts as both a vent line and as an overflow line for the area in between the fuel pump diaphragm and the plunger shaft oil seal. If there is any leakage of fuel through the diaphragm or leakage of oil past the oil seal, this fitting will act as an overflow, so we need to run a line to a safe location. However, we do not want to run this line overboard into the slipstream or into a positive or negative pressure area. If we do this, the corresponding pressure will be routed to the back of the fuel diaphragm 
and may affect proper operation and fuel pressure delivered by the fuel pump. So we need to route a line from this fitting to a safe neutral pressure area. You can run a line routing down your firewall and ending within a couple of inches of the bottom of the cowling. If you wish, you can place this line into a small vented container so that any leakage of fuel or oil will be collected and give you a visual indication of any issues within the fuel pump. Perform another operational test run and check for any leaks. Once a leak-free installation is confirmed, remove the float bowls from both carburetors and check for any contamination that may have entered during the fuel pump installation. If any contamination is found, it must be cleaned out, the engine run once again, and the float bowls checked again for any additional contamination. Now you can enter in this service bulletin as complied with into your engine logbook. You'll find links below this video to download a copy of this service bulletin, as well as links to download all manuals for reference. You can contact your nearest service center, repair center, or IRMT technician for further information and parts availability. You'll find a list of service centers and repair centers on our website using the top menu, clicking on Support Bulletins, and then on Find Service. If you have any comments on this video, email us at videos at rotexowner.com.